an opportunity for today's words. It's a very nice words. Uh, but before we start, we'll do our prayers. Nashta prayeshu abhadreshu nithyam bhagate sevaya bhagate tam shloke bhaktir bhavati naishtaki So today's verse is, let me share the screen with you. Can you see it over here? Yes, Prabhuji. So today's verse is 10.36. I uh, will uh, see the words and then we will repeat after that. Dhyutam chaletam asmi tejas tejas vinam aham Jayo asmi vivasyayo asmi satvam satvata aham patam aham dhyutam chalyatam asmi tejas tejas vinam aham jayo asmi vivayasyo asmi satvam satvavatam aham Anybody want to repeat? Yudam chalayadam asmi teja tejasvi namaham deo asmi vyavasayo asmi sattvam sattva vadam vadamaham Anybody else? Deutam chalayatam asmi tejas tejasvi namaham Jayo asmi, vya vya vasayo asmi, satvam satva vatam aham. Anybody else wants to repeat? Okay, uh, so we'll go with the word to word meanings. Dhyutam. Dhyutam is gambling. Chalyatam. Chal. It comes from the word chal in, in Hindi or Sanskrit. It means of all the cheats. Asmi. I am. Tejas. Teja is the splendor. Tejasvyanam asmi. Tejasvyam aham. Tejasvyanam is all, all, everything splendid. Aham. I am. Jaya. Victory. Asmi, I am, Vivayasyoha, enterprise or adventure. Asmi, I am, Sattvam, the strength, Sattva Vatam, of the strong. Aham, I am. Translation and purport by Shri Prabhupada The translation is, uh, I am also the gambling of cheats and of all the, and of the splendid. I am the splendor. I am victory, I am adventure, and I am the strength of the strong. So here, you know, uh, <clears throat> we'll just go by the purport. Uh, anybody want to read the purport? I am also the gambling of the cheat, and of all the splendor, I am the splendor. I am a victory, I am a strength. Uh, I'm an adventure and I'm the strength of the stronger. That's the purpose. There are many kinds of the cheaters all over the universe. Of all the cheating process, gambling stands supreme and therefore represents the Krishna. As the supreme, supreme Krishna can be more uh, deceitful than any more man. If a Krishna choose to de deceive a person, no one can surpass him in his descent. His greatness is not simply one side. It is in all the sides. Among the victorious, he is a victory. He is a splendor of the splendid. Among the enterprising and the industrious, he is the most enterprising, the most in industrious. 
among adventurers, he is the most adventurous. And among the strong, he is the strongest. When Krishna was present on earth, no one could surpass him in strength. Even in his childhood, he lifted the Govardhan hill. No one can surpass him in cheating. No one can surpass him in splendor. No one can surpass him in victory. No one can surpass him in enterprise. And no one can surpass him in strength. Thank you, Prabhupada. So uh, we start with our prayers. Om Ajnana Jana Timran Dhasya Kyana Jala Shalakya Takshur Ulmita Mena Tasmai Shri Guruve Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Stapita Mena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam One day Aham Shri Guru Shri Yudha Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamcha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajeevam Sadvaitam Swabadutam Pargana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitamsya He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesa Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrinda Vaneshwari Prishbhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpa Trubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhisevacha Patita Nama Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaitya Gadadhar Shrivas Adi Kaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare So today's uh, verse is 1036. It's, it is, I am also the gambling of cheats and of the splendid, I am the splendor. I am victory, I am adventure and I am the strength of the strong. So, um, yeah, we see here uh, there are five different qualities which have been mentioned here in this verse for Lord Sri Krishna. And uh, like if you see starting with the gambling of the cheat so this he's like so as Prabhupada has very nicely said here that uh, he's his greatness is not simply one-sided he is all-sided you know so like gambling is something negative but that does not mean that krishna does not have any negative quality he also has negative and positive qualities so and even in the negative qualities like nobody can you know uh, be greater than him. So it's not just the positive qualities. So as very nicely uh, Prabhuji, Govardhan Prabhuji mentioned yesterday that whenever we see, you know, how we can remember Krishna, man mana bhav mad bhakto. So how we are going to remember Krishna in our mind, we are going to like any quality which is of the greatest, which is like, you know, whether it is positive or negative, it's, it, it's the quality of Krishna, you know, which is there. So Krishna is having all qualities. That's what I was trying to say here. So uh, now, like you know, let's uh, see here further. So basically, in this chapter, the name of the chapter is opulence of the absolute. So we are talking here. What are the opulences of Lord? We are saying he is having full strength. So full strength, even in positive way or negative way. So full fame. So even like full fame, you can say positive and negative. Like we even call him Chor, or we even call him Rani Chor. You know, when he 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 ran away from the battlefield. So and uh, he's like he's having all wealth, he's having an all knowledge, he's all beautiful, and he's all renunciation. Renunciation. So these are the uh, six qualities which define by defined by uh, Parasar Muni, uh, which define who is Bhagwan. And Lord Krishna has all of them in a hundred percent. So that's what it means. Having everything positive and negative. So we have four regulatory principles. So of the four, it is like no meat eating, no intoxication, no illicit relationships, and no gambling. So um, like uh, I, I, I like to keep this session a little bit more you know interactive. So when we say no meat eating. So it's 
it's it's for one of the leg of the of uh, dharma so it is meat eating uh, when we say no meat eating it's a, a quality which shows the compassion the quality of compassion and when we are saying no intoxication it is you know a quality of cleanliness when we we say cleanliness is next to godliness so if we uh, it's just intoxication not just from you know alcohol but also from caffeine and other you know smoking anything like that so we should not get intoxicated and then no illicit relationships it is self explanatory you know that we should not be having any uh, illicit wrong relationships you know and uh, no gambling so now like question may be raised that if we are saying no gambling and then and krishna's gambling and krishna is saying you know i am the gambling of the cheats so among cheats like i am gambling so if somebody could say you know then why do we say no gambling you know uh, if if some prabhu ji or mata ji can explain that if krishna is saying that i am gambling of the cheats i am gambling then why is gambling uh, a regulatory principle which we should not follow i mean we should not do so ji because uh, when krishna does uh, these activities it's mm-hmm. done with an intention and purpose or uh, to make us uh, learn and since krishna is complete in full sense as as in he has the complete knowledge of past present and future which we as jeevas and part and parcel don't and we are conditioned jeevas so therefore um this principle of uh, these principles they apply to us whereas it doesn't apply to krishna because he is absolute on the transcendental plane wow very very nice answer mata ji um anybody else want to add anything to that yeah uh anybody else uh, okay amritanand prabhu you want to say something why uh, why is gambling prohibited in our uh, regulatory principles hari krishna prabhu all comment maybe later i'm just doing some dt service and listening to your lecture oh okay sorry yes sir thank you thank you yeah. yeah anybody else want to uh, say something uh, i just want to keep it more interactive so because this uh, this would be helpful for everybody you know just uh, passively listening let's try to be active here amal gopika you want to say something okay uh, anyway i will uh, try to say you know from what bhagavad gita uh, is said in bhagavad gita uh, shlok 226 and uh, 263 the second chapter says 62nd uh, 62 and 63 verses so in that uh, it says um, it reads the translation as while contemplating the objects of the senses a person develops attachment from them for them and from such attachment lust develops and from lust anger arises so probably i'm not sharing this screen with you but if you can see the same thing that i'm sharing here that is still um so basically when somebody is uh, will be in the in the process of gambling all his mind you know and uh, is focused on the object of the senses here that how he can you know uh, get more and more even though it's a negative thing and what happened in the process the person would go and have attachment for those objects of the senses and what happens 
because of attachment lust comes comes into play and if lust is uh, satisfied then greed is going to come into play so we see that gamblers even if they win they want to win more and more and if lust is not satisfied then it it causes anger to come into play and okay in either way then the 63rd verse says that uh, it says um, from anger complete delusion arises so what we are seeing is that you know the the person loses the delusion and illusion there are two things you know so delusion is to do with the mind so in the mind uh, and illusion is to do, do with the physical senses we have so when we are saying delusion arises uh, the like the person's mind is becoming disturbed and what is going to happen it will lead to the bewilderment bewilderment of the memory and when memory is bewildered intelligence is lost and when intelligence is lost one falls down again into the material pool so basically you know all our sadhana and everything is going to get disturbed in something like this so that is the reason you know we are advised that we should not be going for the gambling so mata ji very nicely said also that you know how like for for lord krishna it will not have any impact you know because he is the vikal darshi he knows everything he knows past present future everything so he would not get impacted by that but somebody like us you know would we are who are infinitely small we could get impacted by that and we you know we see that people lose lot of money uh, when they go to las vegas or even to atlantic city some may win you know, but that's very rare that people one one in a million may go and win some good money but usually people lose more than uh, they win that's why these gambling um, you know hotels are s- able to sustain themselves and we and we know very nicely like you know from mahabharat because of gambling uh, like yudhishthir maharaj you know he had to go through so much of uh, trouble he had to uh, you know he had to le- lose not only the uh, his kingship but he also had to lose the honor of his wife you know which is and in the in, in the whole assembly so nothing can be more uh, you know uh, bad for a for a person you know of his caliber as well so you know that's the reason you know i'm trying to uh, sustain i mean explain it with an example <clears throat> so yeah we did cover this thing so yeah so now what are the examples if somebody can tell us where krishna has been uh, cheating any examples that krishna we know has cheated let's uh, discuss anything if we can remember here anybody want to say uh, prabhu ji that past time where krishna is uh, uh, asking for the taxes from the gopis under the yeah that's uh, cover that's of a gopi and and he's trying to get he's the butter he's trying to cheat them <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very, very nice yeah yeah I, that very, one i recall very very sweet past time mataji thank you for reminding that anybody mm-hmm. else any other there are so many past times here we can we can go through them hari krishna yes hari krishna hari krishna prabhu ji dandvat pranam all glory to shri prabhu prabhu ji i don't exactly remember the names but uh, the the past time where um he made the sun go down and then come up to uh, yes. to kill somebody i don't yes. exactly remember the name yeah that is basically the... very, very nice mata ji i was that that was in my mind actually the jayadratha past time where okay. where yeah. jayadratha uh, you know worship lord shiva and for a single day i know uh, yeah yeah i know the details but i have forgotten the name yeah 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 that's fine yeah. thank you yeah. it happens with me also yeah mm-hmm. so for a single day he was allowed to be uh, more having more power that arjuna could not defeat him that was only for a single day for he was allowed to get that power so mm-hmm. um and uh, in that day he goes and he he kills abhimanyu so now the mm-hmm. next day the kaurava army is trying to protect jayadrath and arjuna out of anger he takes a vow that if i don't kill jayadrath yes, uh, the following yes. day then i am going to take agni samadhi yes yeah. 
So now the uh, the Kaurava army is thinking, how are we, should, if we protect Jaitrat, we have won the war. So then, you know, he does everything. And uh, Arjuna is fighting like left hand with everybody. But Jaitrat is being kept hidden by the Kaurava army. And, you know, and then Lord Krishna, he ultimately he gives up, you know, he surrenders to Krishna and he said, my Lord, you only you can save me. Uh, this, uh, you know, I I am just giving up here. And then, then Lord Krishna, you know, by his, uh, uh, you know, mystic powers, he covers the sun. If people start to feel as if it has become an evening and uh, according to the protocols, the protocols, uh, evening or night time, they will they not start be rejoicing. Yeah, yeah not, mm-hmm. not be fighting, you know. So mm-hmm. what happens is uh, at that everybody time, everybody comes out, Jairad comes out. Yeah, everybody they comes out rejoicing. and Arjuna is all moros. <laughs> correct, that is right. Mm-hmm. Correct, yeah. And then the minute Jaidrat comes out, you know, and Krishna tells him, see, this is where Jaidrat is, and make sure you uh, you kill him, but make sure that his health does not fall on the ground, but goes and falls on the lap of his father. Because Jaidrat mm-hmm. was also protected by his father, that anybody who, right. who kills him, his, uh, his whenever his head is going to fall, the person who is the cause for making uh, his head fall on the ground will also... His head will be chopped off. His, yeah. His head, yeah, his head will burst out. So, so basically, uh, Krishna kills like two birds with a single stone. That's what it meant. Like you know, he makes sure that the the head of Jayadrat goes and falls in the lap of his father, who is in meditation somewhere far away. And when his father opens his eyes, he just throws it onto the ground, and then you know his father also dies with that. So thank you, Matheus. That's a very nice pastime. Anybody else? Um, Hare Krishna. Actually, I remember the pastime where, uh, like, there are many pastimes in Mahabharata we find where Krishna, like, uh, he broke the many rules because to save dharma. And the uh, same thing happened when Karna, he was, like, uh, when Arjuna killed Karna, his wrath was, like, broken and he was down on the, uh, under the, um, on the earth. He was not on top of his vehicle and uh, on his vahan. And at that time, Krishna told Arjuna that even though Arjuna was hesitant to uh, uh, put the arrow on him, but uh, Krishna uh, ordered him. So that was another, he broke the rule of the uh, war. That's the time I remember. Yeah, very nice. Very nice. Yeah. And yeah. same Anybody thing else? for the Aswatthama also happened. Yep. Uh, for everybody else. Too. <laughs> yeah, it was even at the time of when, when uh, uh, Bhima and Duryodhana are fighting. So as per the rules uh, in the Gada Yudha, the Gada should not be hitting below the waist. And in this case, you know, uh, we see first of all, when Gandhari was trying to protect uh, Bhim, uh, I mean uh, Duryodhana by you know asking him to come, come without any clothes so that she could empower him with her powers to protect him with his powers. So he goes, uh, Krishna sees him and realizes what he's going to do. So he makes sure that he covers that, you know, his his uh, private areas and then he goes. And um, because only that area where uh, Gandhari's uh, Drishti could not go, they were weak. And he knew that why uh, his uh, uh, thigh area would be weak. So he, even though it was below his waist, he asks uh, Bhima to strike Duryodhana there. So basically he is killing again like he's being chal twice, right? So Krishna is cheating him twice. He's cheating Duryodhana and once, not only once, but twice. At first he's making sure that he is going without clothes, uh, but his certain areas are covered. And then second uh, time when, you know, he's asking uh, Bhima, you know, that, you know, though you should go hit him below the waist, even though he knew Balram was very upset about it. That you know, this is against the Gadda Yudh rules. Very nice, very, very beautiful example. Anybody else? I mean, we have lots of pastimes, you know. Um, anybody want to share more? Krishna, Krishna Prabhu. Yes, Prabhu. Done well. Uh, when the baby we used to go around breaking pots and stealing from all the gopis. Right. I was One. thinking. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, please. Yeah. Go ahead, Prabhu. Yeah, yeah, please carry on. I, I like to hear from your, your uh, words. So, so, one day, I think her name was Padmavati, that gopi. Mm-hmm. She, she used to complain to Yashoda May. 
And Yashoda Mai used to say that, oh, my Allah can never do such things. He was a very innocent and sweet boy. Correct. But you know, Krishna, Balram and all the Gopas used to go, they used to break the pots, not only break the pots, make a mess, feed the monkeys. Mm -hmm. children. So one day she did and she caught him. And she held him by his hand. Krishna must have been about four or five years. She held him by his hand and was dragging him to Yashoda Mai. And mm -hmm. Krishna had all butter on his fingers and on his mouth and lips. And... So she said, I've caught you red-handed. Now you can't deny. And as she was dragging him, Krishna kept telling her, don't, don't do this, you will regret it. Don't do this, you will regret it. But she like, you know, ah, but I am eko sikhane, you know, a little chit of a boy. I'm old as your mother. She dragged him. And all mm -hmm. the other gopis were very happy. Yeah, yeah, we've got Krishna and the hack. And they all followed her. So there was a big procession. <laughs> and finally they reach Nanda Maharaja's house. And Yashoda Mai comes out. He's saying, what's the matter? She's saying, and Krishna hides behind the gopi. He's saying, what's the matter? And she's holding his hand. So he says, you know, you keep saying your Lalla is innocent. You caught him red-handed. And all these gopis here also are witness. They've caught him red-handed. And he has all butter on his hand and lips and fingers. Mm -hmm. And she's saying, no, no, my Lalla can't do it. He's saying, what do you mean? Here he is. And she pulls him in front. And when she pulls him in front, Krishna turns into her husband. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> with his mystical powers. <laughs> he expands himself as a husband and she's totally bewildered. She doesn't know what to do. So he's saying, what are you saying? My Lalla is standing here behind me. Yes, Adha Mai says, this is your husband. You dragged your husband through the village to show that he is. So as she's going back, you know, Krishna yeah. takes his form and he says, see, I told you, don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah. so you know, as Krishna says, in 330, you know, yeah, So probably a very nice example you gave. So for the gopis, he he, he cheated them in love, you know. And if you see for Duryodhana and uh, like uh, devotees like Karna, we see because they they had malice in their heart, so he he cheated them in the form of malice. So even that verse is being you know uh, you know it. Uh, it confirms itself here. So, yeah. Um, there are, there are other parts. Yes. So, Buchi, I had a question. I'm just confused because um, was it the husband or was it the gopi's son? Because I think till now I have heard that it was the gopi's son. Yeah, actually, yeah, you're right, Mataji. There are two different versions. So, it could be that, you know, in one case, uh, it is uh, that his, uh, I mean, the gopi's husband or it could be gopi's son. So, but, you know, but yeah, the idea, the, the concept is... That, the, is cheating, yeah. But I just yeah. I just got a little confused. I wasn't too sure because whenever yeah. I heard it, I thought it was the song. Yeah, actually, we yeah. also had a drama about 10, 12 years back, you know, in ICNJ. And it was very much loved. And we had the same drama where, uh, you know, uh, like the whole pastime was reenacted. So also, um, we see like in, when uh, Dronachari was killed, right? So, uh, Yudhishthira did not want to say, you know, that, uh, you know, the, the elephant, Ashwatthama, is dead. Ashwatthama. Yeah, so, like, but it was how Krishna tricked the whole thing, whole situation there to make sure how to get Dronacharya out from there. So, that's another pastime. Similarly, we also have the pastime of Kalyavan. So, Kalyavan was one of the demons. And... Uh, like and he was trying to kill Krishna, so uh, Krishna, you know, uh, he's he's following Krishna. I don't know if anybody remembers the past time. I can say if, uh, okay. Let me just finish it anyway. So uh, he 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 tries to catch Krishna, but he's unable to catch Krishna because Krishna is too fast for him, you know. And uh, and then finally, Lord Krishna he takes him into a, a gufa, uh, basically a cave, where. Um, uh, Muchukunda, one of uh, one of the devotees of uh, the Lord, is sleeping, you know, and he was he was uh, Muchukunda was uh, in um, he he was in the Sur Asur Sangram. So basically, in the Devatas and the Asura Sangram, he was very much participating in that. 
and he got so tired that he asked for a boon that if anybody disturbs me then uh, in my sleep i don't want to be disturbed if anybody disturbs me if i open my eyes that guy should turn into ashes so krishna nicely enters in there and he goes and hides somewhere behind michukunda and uh, while uh, hiding he also makes sure that the uh, you know he is he is putting a chadar on him that chadar he puts on michukunda so when kalevan follows him into the cave he realizes oh probably krishna is hiding here sleeping here from me out of fear so he goes and tries to wake him up and the minute he wakes him up muchukunda opens his eyes and he looks at kalevan and kalevan is turned into ashes so you know that's like a so krishna did not even wanted to waste his energies you know he is even very careful where to utilize his energies and where not to utilize his energies so similarly like um, when uh, other past time when um, um, subhadra mai krishna wanted that arjuna uh, subhadra and arjuna should get married but uh, he knew that balram is not going to accept it uh, so he 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 tells arjuna you know you elope with uh, subhadra and also basically is another way he did the same like he he, he if he wanted to do it he is going to do it so he knows how to do it whether uh, if he has to even cheat for that purpose Uh, also okay. prabhu when uh, duryodhan right when he is going uh, to meet his mother without uh, any without clothes. clothes yeah right. I, i i did mention that mother yeah, that yeah, he 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 goes sorry, without I yeah and then uh, yeah similarly like you know uh, he has like we see that several times we see that that krishna is smart so even like you know so when he uh, tells arjuna you know i want you to say for this because if i am going to say that then people will say okay that he is a cheater so he can he maybe probably he is cheating that's the reason people may not believe me so that is the verse i believe you know uh, that i want to this is ninth chapter uh, i'm just trying to see what verse is there just a second not to be I'm forgetting that. Sorry. So there is a verse that Api say Dura Charu. No, maybe Sri Vishnu Prabhu can remember that verse. That I want you to say for me. He says right because he, if I am going to say that people are not going to trust me, but if you say then people are going to trust me. You know. Uh, okay. And uh, maybe we'll discuss that later. Anyway. Uh, so yeah. So so Krishna is known for cheating. So then. Uh, yeah then next was the other uh, quality is his victory where everyone likes victory and lord like lord krishna is uh, a personification of victory you know um, so like uh, in the past time where arjuna goes about and uh, arjuna and duryodhana are going to meet krishna and uh, even though arjuna reaches there first and then duryodhana is also there they are waiting for krishna to open his eyes because krishna lord krishna is sleeping so when lord krishna op- uh, takes up he sees arjuna first and then he says uh, duryodhana so now um, he asks arjuna what you wh- what you want from me and uh, then duryodhana and arjuna are like having a discussion you know that who should get the first chance so uh, okay he's arjuna saying like let uh, duryodhana ask for it that's what i think it is and uh, and duryodhana says you know i i want your help uh, and i want to you know i think yeah, arjuna asks first correct arjuna asks first and arjuna says for the wa- for the war for mahabharat you know i want you and then duryodhana says you know uh, because i don't have anything else so i will take your narayana sena narayani sena so you know at that time uh, later on um, arjuna and and krishna are discussing and krishna says you let the makhan you know you let the butter go to duryodhana how did you let it go you know so then arjuna replies you know my lord i have the butter teeth with me so what do i do with the butter i don't care for the butter you know as long as i have the butter teeth with me i don't care for the butter so that's the past time you know where like uh, lord krishna is himself you know and personification of victory and the same thing happened is discussed by sanjaya 
in the last verse of bhagavad gita where he says nicely he says wherever there is krishna the master of all mystics and wherever there is arjuna the supreme archer there will also be certainly opulence victory extraordinary power and morality and this is my opinion so you know so like basically sanjay is also saying the same thing that lord krishna is a personification of victory so <clears throat> then let's go to his next quality so next quality is splendor so yeah so uh, lord krishna says in uh, 10 41 the same chapter like 41st verse he is he say he's going to be saying us uh, when we come go there he says know that all opulent beautiful and glorious creation spring but from but a spark of my splendor so that all these beauty things all those glorious things you're seeing they are coming just from a spark of my splendor so as krishna is saying that he is the splendor he just uh, like you know, so he is he is trying to justify that so krishna is infusing the objects with splendor infuse the audience splendor that we experience them as splendid and we call them the splendid we say we see it the sun we see wow how we we are we really amazed by the you know the splendor of the sun every day similarly we we look at the ocean we look at the moon we look at the you know uh, clouds we look at the hurricanes you know just imagine even the hurricane like even though is so uh, formidable just to look at that but that's the power of krishna so uh, let's discuss some uh, is there a past time we could discuss where krishna shows his splendor anybody you know who can remember the past time where krishna is showing his splendor yeah hari krishna prabhu ji namo pranam all glories to shri prabhu so yes prabhu ji when krishna lord krishna was um, in the court of duryodhan right in court of parma yeah, because he was pleading for uh, five uh, villages right uh, so just right. for that Make an effort that there should not be a war and you know so much destruction. So that's what happened when he was asking. Last when he got there was just five villages. Duryodhan said that never mind five villages. I'm not going to give a pinch of a needle, you know, land of that size. So and he said to his all his um, soldiers to get make Krishna bandi and uh, and also kind of put him in a karagra. But the moment they try to Poor Krishna and tried to capture him. Mm-hmm. So that's the time when Krishna turned into a very yeah. uh, divine rope, and yes, he yeah. showed his splendor. And people who were out there, they could immediately recognize that this is the supreme, and we cannot mess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he, he shows a part of his universal form, not even the full universal yeah. form. Right. Yeah, very yeah. nice. Yeah, that's our next chapter. Uh, anybody else? Any other past time? Anybody want to remember? Prabhuji, when he kills the Kaliya Nag and then he stands on it and comes out of the Yamuna River, would that be a an example of this or no? Uh, yeah, you could say in a way, but it's but we don't see the splendor with something which is like you know mag uh, real big magnificent something like that. But yes, it is Kaliya himself was so magnificent, and when Krishna tames him, so that's why I'm saying yeah, in a way that's a splendor of him. So you're right uh, that. He's he had thousand um, heads, and Krishna is dancing on them, right? And uh, and every time Kali is thinking, oh, now this time I'm going to get hold of this guy, and this time I'm getting hold of this guy, just like and Krishna is cheating him at the same time. So he he jumps on the other head. So even with thousand heads, he's unable to you know catch Krishna, bite Krishna anyway. So thank you, Mataji. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, I had a past time in my mind. that is the dwarka past time where krishna had 16108 wives and he made sure that all his wives are fully taken care of. so he built 16108 palaces for them you know that's like that's that like i can't even imagine that you know 16108 palaces you know and and like everything is splendid there you know everything is everybody has everything what they want that's only lord can do it and he is everywhere in all the palaces at all at the same time so that's only possible by lord krishna and nobody else can even imagine something like that if anybody wants to add anything else is that similar to when lord brahma was uh, had gone to meet lord krishna and that's yeah. very said okay the gatekeeper said which brahma 
Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's another beautiful fast one. Thank you, Prabhu. Yeah, beautiful. Very bold. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, Prabhu. Very good. Yeah, and then like uh, we'll go to the next part where we discuss about the adventure. So Krishna's some. I'm just putting some of the Vrindavan pastimes here. So like he was like hardly you know few days old when Putna tried to come and kill him. So like it's like an adventure. <laughs> What is going to happen? and it's like he goes about and he, he kills putna just like that you know and putna had come to poison him same thing the cart past time in sakta sura and then trinavata past time when the the demon comes as a as a tornado demon you know we can say and then uh, vatsa sura you know one of the demon comes as a calf then we have another demon which comes like a stork then agasura one of the demon comes as a python right and then arista sura like a demon like this is arista sura past time when uh, he demon comes like a bull and because of this past times we have the radha kund and sham kund because of them and then we have the denuka sura we have the kali serpent uh, we have uh, forest fire you know all the all the gopas are there uh, and there is fire in the forest and krishna you know just in one go you know he goes and he 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 just sucks in all the fire you know and there everything is calm and cool from that point so uh, similarly we have the keshi sura uh, bhima sura you know kalivan so like there there are like i can keep going on on and on like even kamsa like uh, when he 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 takes birth right from the birth like you know he's he's taking birth in a jail you know just imagine you know it's like uh, like that that's the climax of the movie you can think you know that somebody taking part taking birth in a jail and then he is coming out of there un- unhurt and he is going and uh, living into another uh, village and then from there he comes back and then he goes and kills kamsa and he makes sure that his parents are relieved uh, from the prison his grandfather is is relieved from the prison so like it's all his life is full of adventures so you know um so like i'm just trying to then we know the strength he says strength is i am we know the govardhan in the past time where he is lifting the govardhan hill for 7 days on his pinky he is just standing you know with just one uh, one uh, one hand left arm pinky he is he is carrying the whole hill so who can be more having more strength than that so you know uh, with that I think I'll conclude the this session. If anybody has any questions or anything you want to ask, please do. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Yes, Prabhu. Um, on that point where it was, you know, why four regulative principles and gambling. right yes sir the point now what i've heard in lecture then i think this several years back at radha gopinath mandir i forget who the speaker was um see the word dharma like we know the uh, dharma stands on four legs right austerity yes. cleanliness mm-hmm. truthfulness compassion yes. so dharma has many meanings and one of the meaning of dharma is the essence that defining characteristic if it is absent then that thing no longer remains so for example dharma of water is wetness dharma of chili is spiciness dharma of sugar is sweetness so you can't separate the sweetness from sugar so similarly the dharma from that perspective the dharma of a jiva living entity is as how chaitanya charitamrit says jivera swarupa hoy krishna re nitya das we are eternally servants mm-hmm. we are eternally servants so the dharma of the soul is to serve now each of these regulative principles now the reason we are not serving actually we are serving ourselves if you see anything that we do is we are serving ourselves because i am in the center whatever that you misuse of free will 
ignorance, so and so forth. So with these four principles that further entangles us because of that sense gratification into the false ego, we get further trapped. And that's why one of the uh, regulative principles is to, you know, already we are stuck in it, you're trying to get unstuck. So don't gamble, don't elicit sex, no meat eating, no uh, meat eating. Intoxication. Is it? Intoxication. So from that perspective, the yep. and the other point to note is uh, Krishna is absolute. So what may seem to be a negative quality is actually a positive. So like the absolute value in mathematics of negative two yeah. is the values two. Yeah. So there is nothing which is so to say negative. In our terms that negative is detrimental. It affects us, it affects others. Whereas with Krishna, a thing like gambling or cheating, it, it benefits the cheated. So if Krishna would go and steal Makhan from the gopi's house, they would get so much ecstatic uh, feelings and bring them closer to uh, Krishna. In fact, they used to wait. When will Allah come to my house to steal Bhattar? Thank you, Prabhu. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for, for, for uh, giving the nice essence for dharma and connecting it nicely. How uh, dharma, uh, you know, what is the dharma of the living entity? And and also mentioning about that Lord is absolute. So those two, both the points are very nice. Thank you for bringing that up. Prabhu, another point is Hari Kishore Prabhu had made. I just remembered it. You know, our scriptures... Uh, can be full of contradictions and two yeah. points. Uh, that's why we need a spiritual master or the company of Vaishnavas who understand it as it is. So someone can read and say, oh, Krishna says I'm the uh, cheating ability in the gamble. <laughs> it is license to cheat because Bhagwan ne bole. Bhagwan ne bole. You know, like God's word is ultimate. Or similarly, people think of Krishna's Ras Leela as something very mundane romance between yeah. boy and girl. Yeah. In fact, there are people who even imitate it and think it's an act of worship. Uh, but when we have a spiritual master, what they do is, so Hari Kishore Prabhu had said, scriptures are not text, they are context. So to understand that context, our own, you know, puzzled mind, it's impossible to do it. We'll always jump to the wrong conclusion. Whereas the spiritual master and a Vaishnav would be able to explain as it is. Thank you. Yes. The, the texts are, the, the spiritual uh, subjects are, their texts are not texts, but their context. That is very nice idea. I, in fact, I was remembering uh, once somebody asked Srila Prabhupada, is there something that Krishna cannot do? So what you mentioned that, you know, that Krishna has all the, uh, the positive and the negatives and still he turns it as positive. So, like, you know, now, uh, so, so basically somebody is asking Srila Prabhupada, is there something? Because if he is God, then he should be, there should be something which he, they, then, you know, how is it possible that there is anything that we cannot do? So, anybody remembers the past thing, you know, maybe you mentioned to remember it. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's, yes. Let's so, ask this question that, you know, what Lord cannot, um, um, you know, create that such a heavy thing that he cannot carry. Okay, yeah. And, uh, you know, I asked a question like that. Um, I think Srila Prabhupada mentioned that. Amrudanda Prabhu, I think that you, you made it very clearly that uh, one day that you, you made that example, right? Prabhu. 
Yeah. It's someone asked Prabhupada, he was trying to be smart. <laughs> that Prabhupada, can Krishna make something that is so heavy that he cannot lift it? So it's a trick question. If Krishna cannot make something so heavy, that means he is not God because God is full of potency. Similarly, if he cannot lift it also, he is not God. Right. So yeah. either you, do, you don't become God, if you do it also, you're not God. Yeah. So Prabhupada, without blinking an eye, he said, yes, Krishna can, <laughs> Krishna can make something which is so heavy that he can't lift it. But next moment, his energy is always expanding. He'll be able to lift it. So we think of our energy and power as in terms of limit, 100 kilowatt, 1000 kilowatt, whatever. We have limit, but Krishna is unlimited. Yeah. Uh, Krishna is unlimited. Yeah, thank you. Prabhupada. Actually, he also, Sri Prabhupada there gives the example when he is uh, trying to lift the sandals of Nanda Maharaj. He's, he's finding a lot of difficulty, but a lot of difficulty. He's lifting that, he's a little boy. And then he is carrying it on his head because he can't lift it and walk with that. So he puts it on his head and then he walks. So uh, we have seen that picture, you know. I, I, I remember I saw that in New Vendam, I don't know where else uh, people have seen it though. But that's such a, that's, that's where it is explained that can Krishna make something which is so heavy that he can't lift it. So, yeah, so he gives the, Shri gives that past time, that time. Thank you. Thank you for uh, explaining that nicely. To us. The idea is always consult a spiritual authority. Always, no matter. Uh, having a doubt is not a problem. But doing nothing about a doubt and jumping to your own conclusion creates the problem. Yeah, that is so population. That's yeah. very important. Having a spiritual authority whom you can consult with. Yeah. Thank you so much. Beautiful class, beautiful discussion. It seems like and your Bhagavadam is covered today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There is so much more, you know. We yeah, it's beautiful to hear and it's just beautiful to uh, revive, you know, goes through the wonderful pastimes of the Supreme Lord. So beautiful. This is the beauty of see that each word we can completely cover the entire Bhagavadam in each words of Krishna, and entire Bhagavadam can completely take Krishna. One time, uh, some devotees asked this question. When you go to Vrindavan, you can see that it's maybe like, you know, 60 crores or I mean, whatever that's, uh, how many, 50 miles or 56 miles around or, you know, that's all together. How is it possible that uh, millions of gopis come there and uh, Krishna do the pastimes and uh, the other run is in Moshana and Krishna is here in Gokul and how fast even if started to walk in the morning and uh, usually every day Radharani comes to the Gokul to, to make the you know bhoga for Krishna. So first so even if started to walk from Moshana to here Vrindavan um, Gokul it takes a lot of hours you know it's, it's, it's not possible this is all uh, you know how do we take it all these things. So um, Srila Prabhupada mentioned, replied that um, the Vrindavan and the Lord's abode is like a lotus. When it is in the morning, it's all very close. And then it's as soon as the sun comes, it's and it's spread like this. So Vrindavan is like a lotus and it's it comes together and it's also expand like that whenever Krishna needed the pastime. You know, it's all part of the Yoga Maya. So exactly. So Anybody goes there and this, all these doubts they may have, right? Uh, how is it possible? Vrindavan is so far, sorry, Varsana is so far, Ravel is so far, and Vrindavan is like that, Yamuna. It says that on the banks of the Yamuna, on the, on the Sharat Purnima, almost like 600 and 630 millions of copies, and they all, Sunat Chakravarti Thakur writes a commentary that they all fit into that because of this is the, uh, this is the spiritual realm. So it's beautiful. It's beautiful to um, you know understand. So everything can be fit. Even a word of Krishna, everything can be comprised. 
Bhagavan. Everything can be entire world can be comprised with that one word of Krishna. That is Bhagavan or the word of Krishna. You know, everything can be put into that. That's the beauty of the holy name or Krishna's name or Krishna himself. You know, it's so wonderful, so beautiful. Wow, wonderful. Anybody else? Nothing to add? There was also a beautiful pastime happened in Jagannath Puri. I mean, it's uh, the cheating cases. See, Raghunath Das Goswami was there in Jagannath Puri that time. Raghunath Das Goswami was sleeping around 10, 11 o'clock. Maybe, yeah, something like that. So Jagannath came to Jagannath Das Goswami, called Jagannath, 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 get up, get up. So there is a beautiful garden out there in Jagannath Puri, and in that garden there are lots of jackfruit, jackfruit trees and all. So Krishna came and uh, told Jagannath, Jagannath, I would like to eat jackfruit. In this night, yeah, in this night I would like to eat now. Can you help me? Yeah, sure. And Jagannath Das Goswami came and uh, Krishna told you climb on the tree, on a jackfruit tree. So you then go there and pluck it and put it down and then I will hold it. So Jagannath said, yes, of course I'll go. Jagannath climbed on the jackfruit tree and plucked this jackfruit and put it down. Krishna just simply leave that. Krishna didn't carry that, hold it, just left it. So what happened? The jackfruit came down with big noise that something, you know, there is a big commotion and noise and Krishna just ran away. Krishna just ran away. And Dagunath was on the top and people were all came from, what is happening? What is over here? It was a private property and as well. So everybody saw that Dagunath was sitting on the uh, branches of the jackfruit jackfruit tree. So everybody uh, told him that, you know, this is what every day jackfruit was going. This, the, 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 you know, the, the thief is here. They caught hold. They, they, they red-handed. They caught hold of the Gunnar and brought to the, uh, everybody. The Gunnar as Goswami was so embarrassed, so embarrassed in such a way that thinking, why Krishna did this to me? Why Krishna did this to me? And then uh, on that night, and then everybody, you know, yeah, Raghunath was stealing the jackfruit every day and he is claiming that he is not eating anything. But look at that, you know, Raghunath was just even merely, you know, having this jack, you know, the buttermilk and, you know, this little bit. And so then uh, Krishna was making this plan and everybody said, look at that, Raghunath, Raghunath said that he is uh, showing off and he said he is not eating anything. But look at that in the night climbing on the jackfruit and putting down and then look at this, all these kinds of things. So then Jagannath Das Goswami is so embarrassed. And then on that day in the altar, there is a big uh, uh, pastime happened to the Lord. And there are lots of what is called that, you know, the what is called the, the jackfruit that um, which comes. It was all, all over on the Lord's hair and what is that um, that the gum right which comes out which is jackfruit that has and uh, and that priest saw that and the priest had a dream about all this past time what has happened the priest came out and told to everyone and this is what is happened krishna is cheated that's because saw me and everybody you know felt that yes krishna was personally coming out and uh, the reason for Krishna did that because he wanted to glorify his devotee and took such a penance of Raghunath Das Goswami was doing such a penance and to get out that to everyone that you know what kind of penance Raghunath Das Goswami going through. So how close Krishna to such devotees and Krishna made this plan you know so beautiful. <laughs> yeah it's uh, amazing. This is Raghunath Das Goswami of us, six Goswamis. Yes, yes. 
was in Vrindavan for some time, remember? Then uh, from the Bengal, ran to the Jagannath Puri in order to meet Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Yeah. And Jagannath Das Goswami there for quite some time. Then came to Vrindavan after. Yeah, 500 years ago. <laughs> so many ways. Krishna is there. Krishna is Bhakta Valsala. He is very dear to his devotees. He would do anything for his devotees, no matter what. We would say this is that, this is this, this is wrong, this is what. What Krishna is doing is absolute and right. And so it is all we need to take. We are not there to judge anything. Yep. Yeah. Anything else? Anybody else? Is anything to add? Any realizations? Any any wonderful topics, discussions, questions, of course. I have a question on Japa Prabhu. Go ahead, please. When we do Japa, so like especially if you read some pastime and Bhagavatam. Like when Krishna comes back from the forest with his cows and gopas, and there's a nice description all the dust comes and falls on his face, he's perspiring. Oh, yeah, yeah, beautiful. Yeah, similarly, when Krishna is entering Mathura, yeah, so you know, the description of the houses, the road, oh, yeah. very beautiful. elaborate description. So, while doing japa, the mind can go to these pastimes or descriptions and in the mind you can visualize whatever you know, this is how it is and whatever is there it is playing in your mind like a movie the sound is coming Hare Krishna Hare Krishna the Japa is going on but then I'm considering that it is though it is a spiritual thing it is still distracting because the idea is to focus on the sound so do we continue with this pastime? We don't do the pastime and you know ignore it just like we try to do with other things that jump in the mind during the time. Yeah, this is a beautiful question. This is asked before also, Proji. Many times it's asked this these things. Actually, there are two ways that this pastime comes to the consciousness. One is whimsical that we put our thoughts and then, okay, we are bringing Krishna. We are trying to meditate on Krishna while chanting and, you know, Srila Prabhupada said, don't do that. I very clearly mentioned that Srila Prabhupada's instruction that don't try to do that because of then we are mental speculators. Uh, then, you know, that doesn't help. Of course, meditation on the other times, Krishna, anything meditated on Krishna, that's all wonderful, very nice. But while chanting, don't bring artificially Krishna in the mind. Srila Prabhupada used this word artificially. But also on the other hand, the result of the pure chanting, the results of the pure chanting is actually one can enter into the pastimes of Krishna. That's a holy name. Holy name is complete. Because of when we say Hare, Krishna and Rama, which has Sandini potency, which has Samrut potency, which has Hladini potency. That's what it is. Hare is Hladini potency. Krishna is the Samrut potency. And Ram is the Sandini potency. And this is complete realm of Krishna or complete realm of Kolok Vrindavan. So holy name is complete. Let's say holy name is so powerful and this is the confidential part of it. It has all these potencies, Sandini, Samrut and Hladini. It has one who chants the holy name, they will attain the knowledge. One who chants the holy name, they will enter into the abode. That's a Samrut potency, Krishna himself. And then Sandini potency. And this full of potency and the knowledge and the Radhini potency full of bliss. So basically, one who chants purely, he will enter into the pastimes of the Supreme Lord. If he is pure, he does not even know that. He would enter into it. He would enter into the pastimes and that's where actually one who realizes that's the results of the pure chanting, his own sarup, his own identity that he reveals 
Krishna reveals that identity to such devotees. He will also realize that his identity, what is his eternal service. All this actually reveals to such devotees, one who chants purely on the pure platform. And he would enter into the pastimes of Krishna, in the, in the, in the abode of Krishna. With all those gopis and all those, and uh, that is very clear and that is very true. So, yes, as uh, some devotees, that's such a, they chant very purely and they do enter into the, you know, the pastimes of the Lord. Let's see the two things. One is whimsical that we artificially bring, then that happens, what happens after some times it goes away. But one who chants the holy name purely, and then uh, they would definitely, you know, taste. They will have the taste for the holy name because how do they develop the taste for the holy name? Because they will have the close association of the Lord, and that's a, you know the greatest taste, the knowledge and the bliss and the potency and everything. There are lots of devotees. They chant very greatly in such a way that they they cannot even stop the chanting because of they enter into that place, enter into that pastimes. They would continue chanting. They will not count for that, you know, I am chanting this many rounds, okay, let me stop here. They would chant, they would chant continuously because of they develop that taste, they develop that ruchi, they develop, you know, the bhava, they develop that all those ecstasies, you know, it comes to that such a chanter. Yes, it's true that it's, it's a chanter knows that, you know, this we cannot say that, right? The chanter knows that, you know, whether it is the Krishna's pastimes comes to the mind is we are bringing whimsically or it's coming naturally that we are entering into the pastimes of the Lord. Is it clear, Prabhuji? Or is that, yeah? Uh... Yes, Prabhu. Very nice. Thanks. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay, anything else? Anybody else? <coughs> okay, if there is nothing else, then uh, let's conclude. So let's uh, so follow up on that uh, Amitanan Prabhu's question. Okay. If the devotee is chanting purely, mm -hmm. and if they enter into the pastime of the Krishna, Okay. They must be in ecstasy. They must be in ecstasy. Because, because they, are, they are chanting purely. Yeah. Because we were chanting purely, they are in ecstasy. Yeah. Am I correct on that? Yes, exactly. That's correct. Because of, I would give you an example. There is Srinivas Acharya. Srinivas Acharya was chanting, and uh, that's where, uh, you know, all. Uh, wonderful devotees in Vandavan and all doing, they don't care about anything else. So Srinivas Acharya was chanting the holy name and started the holy name and entered into the pastimes of Srimadhi Radharani. So the pastime is like this, Srimadhi Radharani lost her nose ring in the water. So everybody was searching and Srinivas Acharya also was in deep meditation and then all on a sudden completely deep meditation soft. and searching and searching and that passed one day, that passed second day and passed third day. So what happened? Everybody was now trying and they were trying and touching the nose and whether there is any breath or you know air is coming in and out or not. When they put some cotton in front of the nose and they saw that there are slight very slight, you know, movement of the air. And they were waiting for it. And everybody was even a little worried what is going on, what is going on. So, but devotees knows that this is an ecstasy. This is a stage where they enter into the pastimes of the Lord like this. And on the third day, and Srinivas Ajaria searching and searching and searching everywhere, this nose ring, and then finally came out and said, I found it, I found it, I found it. That's where, uh, you know, Srinivas Ajaria just came back to the consciousness because of found the nose ring of Srimadhi Radha Rani. And uh, I found it, I found it. 
So everybody was wondering what you are talking, what are you talking about? Srinivasaji explained everything to the devotees nearby in the Kudir. And, uh, you know, likes that. So there was another pastime was, it has happened recently actually that uh, one, a merchant who is a seller of great perfumes, and he's a maker of great perfumes, like very expensive. He he actually makes everything in Pakistan, but uh, he is very he is a very um, uh, you know very much uh, attached to Bangay Bihari Liji in Vrindavan. He's very much attached to the Krishna. So he made a perfume like this. It's almost like six six thousand dollars, like in a big bottle like that. That much expensive, you know, the fragrance he made. And he thought, you know, he would bring that, he would offer to the Bhangi Bihariji. But he also had a guru, Baba, who was very much, uh, you know, admired and very much always take blessings whenever he comes to the uh, Mundavan side. And he came and uh, so this time he wanted to offer this perfume to the Bhangi Bihariji. And then he came first and to meet this Baba, it's as if like, you know, like his guru. And he came there and uh, he put this uh, perfume in the down there and this Babaji didn't speak anything. Now, as soon as he came and he, you know, this, this merchant and he paid the obeisance to this Babaji. And then, uh, you know, then, uh, you know, this Babaji was in the deep meditation and all on a sudden he just took this he just took this perfume and put it down, like, you know, pour it down on the floor, you know, on the, on the, on the ground. And then this merchant was so astonished, this was so expensive and he's putting down here and what is going on here? And then Babaji was saying that use this, use this and throw this and use this and throw this like this. Actually, then the Babaji explained this later that I was in the deep meditation when Krishna, Radha and Krishna were playing the water pastime and Krishna was, you know, pumping the water and Radharani is throwing the water and from the bucket, wherever it is. At one point of time, Radharani just ran out of this old water and colors and everything, nothing was left. That's the time this uh, Babaji was just took that and put it on the bucket, you know, as if that and then ra helping Radharani to throw the water to Krishna and uh, you know it's a nice pastimes was going on there. And then uh, this this merchant was didn't stop as soon as he saw this he put everything down and everything he just little got upset and he just walked got up and he just went into the Bange Bihariji temple. And as soon as he came to the entrance and he, he heard that smell of his, his, his perfume that it was full, the entire temple was filled with that perfume there in the Bangi Bihariji temple. An entire temple was filled with, this was, you know, the road from the Bangi Bihari, it was happened there. And then he took the darshan of the Lord and he ran, he, he ran towards the Babaji back and then followed the feet of the Babaji and said, and, uh, you know, requested the blessings and didn't realize what is going on there. So then, uh, you know, then Babaji was, came to the consciousness and then revealed that what was happening there to this, this was there. So, yes, everybody that in a different, there are Ashta Swatika Vikara, it is called Ashta Swatika Vikara. People, some, uh, some will be trembling with uh, what is called uh, their hair stand on end and they tremble, they shiver their body. This is one of it. Another is actually they create some kinds of noises when they are kind of in that ecstasy. And then another is actually kind of, you know, the Rashta Siddhi is in the nectar of devotion. It is explained so nicely, like big awning and then making noise and dancing and falling at the feet, becoming unconscious. And then all, all of these things and become unconscious and so many things. And uh, yes they would all get into that ecstasy because of this is a different state of or different stage of the consciousness where devotees chant and completely conscious of Krishna and they don't see anything else but Krishna and that state Krishna, you know, they would enter, uh, Krishna allows.
that's the stage of bhava and niraganuga bhakti and bhava at the stage yeah yes they would they would get into ecstasy no doubt yeah so great story prabhu not the story the real story prabhu oh yeah yeah so many so many out there so many yes beautiful prabhu so many so many. I mean, even if you take any temples, like you know, so many temples. There are so many Krishna's interaction with his devotees: Jagannath Puri Temple, Guruvayur Temple, Tota Govindad Temple, Kira Chora Temple, Govardhan Temple, and uh, you know, Vrindavan <laughs> Temple, Bangke Bihari Ji, Govindad Temple. Wherever is there, there are so many, so many interactions that Krishna has with uh, you know his devotees. So many, so many. Yes, so, so Prabhu, I have one co- two question not related to that. Two question I have, Prabhu. but not to no time. I think. Go ahead, go ahead. So, one question is that uh, uh, so our four regulative principle in dharma also they are no playing the gambling, no no do the gambling, right? No gambling. No, no gambling. no gambling. No gambling. No, you should not do any gambling. So, so what is the what is the definition of gambling uh, so what is what what is the meaning of gambling when you say gambling means you are not giving uh, cheating some somebody and uh, another thing is that that is own type of cheating and another thing is that not giving any service getting more something like that yeah it's a big uh, definition of gambling right bit thing yeah. and uh, looking for something that which uh, you know you make some profit looking for something that you know you don't do anything but um, getting other people and involved and you just get it and so many ways you can define the gambling yes right. so my question is that uh, first question is that so a lot of person investing in the cr market that is i think that this is a white gambling yes so That's that gambling. is also Right, it's also gambling. That. Yes, we should not we do should that. Not. Yes. Uh, and uh, other thing is that Prabhu Dharmaraj Judishti know that uh, gambling is bad, but gambling is not against the dharma. But yeah. he did. He played. Uh, yeah, with, he played the what is that? Played with Sukuni Mama. That. Yeah. Uh, uh, what is the play? <laughs> Gambling that is, I forgot that particular uh, play. Yeah, the dice, the dice. Yeah, dice, dice. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, so did did that right? Mm-hmm. So why he's a, he's a, he came from he's a son of dharma, and um, he did that uh, against the dharma. What is the reason? Yeah, Sangarshan, do we want to answer? Mm-hmm. Try if. Okay. Okay, yeah, very very nice question, Ashish Patidi. Actually, at that time, Yudhishthira Maharaj was like a king. He was in the position of a king. So, in that position, if uh, some if he would have refused that he is not going to play that, it would had uh, you know based on the position, it would not be appropriate that he can say no. I I I don't want to do gamble. So, uh, in fact, you know. Um, Like it is, uh, somebody even asked this question that uh, what else could he have done? So very nicely it is said that when Duryodhan wanted to play the gamble, he he uh, took the help of Shakuni Mama. And what Yudhishthira could do is he could have taken the help of Lord Krishna. So he did not do that. He he just wanted to do it himself. So had he taken the help of uh, Lord Krishna, no, he would not have to go through all this. You know, sorry, I'm just adding to that. So, because of his position, he could not say no to it, even though he did not want to do it. If something I'm missing. Misha Prabhu may add to that. Okay. It was also a dharma of a shatriya, the code of that um, they 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 engage into the um, dice games, so that they can develop. They can. That's where it started. Even the dice games or all this, you know, comes into the picture that say they can develop some kinds of plans so that. Their mind will always. So it was a challenge. It was a challenge to Shatriya. If somebody challenges to a Shatriya, they cannot deny that. They should, you know, take it. Otherwise, 
it is kind of feeling that it's defeated right away right there itself so that's also a mood of kshatriya or a code of kshatriya that if anybody challenges they should not go away from it and uh, so it was a challenge for you know yudhishthira and from the duryodhana so when somebody challenges a kshatriya they would take it and that's why yudhishthira even took it even though yudhishthira knew that he is going to be uh, you know he will be losing everything but still he took it because of that's a dharma that he wanted to follow it was not a dharma it was a dharma the kshatriya dharma that he was planning to he was you know involved actually so but what we are talking about the gambling which um, which anything that which we are not bound to get it or which is not supposed to or is not from our hard work it's not from our anything that which we are trying to get it from others or some way or other whatever it is so don't endeavor for anything that which can get something freely from others you know is all kind of gambling kind of attitude yes making ma'am. yeah making easy profit from others cheating others you know putting betting and okay let me put this money today and tomorrow i'll get some double the money you know there are a lot of money chains you know so many things going on in this world yes so that's great prabhu at least getting the getting the definition of the gambling of what what should we, we should not do we should yeah. not do what we need to get that information at least so yeah. one thing so last question prabhu I, i know that last question prabhu but dharma means prabhu these four things to protect these four things to devoy mane king one one king should uh, take care of these things so to protect the dharma so so to see to mane particular king should against always the gambling right yes against yudhishthira the... yudhishthira maharaj was even again as he was hesitating to do that Yudhishthira Maharaj was not intentional or it was not his desire to do that. So there is always a distinction, right? If somebody desired to do the gambling or something like that, but somebody coming and challenging and to ask for, you know, challenge. There's a two different scenarios here. Yes, I agree that, yes, king should protect and this Yudhishthira Maharaj was protecting unnecessarily. Yudhishthira Maharaj didn't involve in any kind of gambling. Uh, but it was challenged by Shakuni and Duryodhana. and i'll say you know so you just try hard to take it and they know that they are dharma putra if somebody asks for something that's also like that if somebody asks is who is in the dharma and religion somebody ask you or somebody ask for something like those who are religious they would not deny that they would somehow give that so they were all trying to take advantage of yudhishthira maharaj and that's what is in yudhishthira maharaj willingly that's the dharma so he was upkeeping dharma that's why he didn't you know he couldn't get the defeat in any of because of he was protecting dharma so that's why he says that dharma rakshadi rakshadu one who protects the dharma dharma will protect them that is very true one who upkeeps the dharma then they will they will have always that uh, victory or dharma will protect them yes for so uh actually so krishna said in bhagavad gita also no better to do your duty than to imitate somebody's yeah. so as a king it was his duty kshatriya exactly each uh, person has his duty brahmana has a duty vaishya has a duty shudra has a duty so as long as you stay in your lane what your duty is you need to then everything is in order but the problem is we all go out of our lane everyone wants to be a king but we don't want to be king of our own mind there we are servant so become the king of our mind and then say no no to gambling no to meat eating and in one sense prabhupada said kalyug we all shudras there is no brahmana there is no kshatriya there is nothing we all shudras and shudras is just to serve that's his dharma yeah yes yes so so prabhu but king should should not allow the gambling at all that is his dharma also no on those days on those days 
um, it was part of the code of Kshatriyas because of um, because of the reason for the like like we can say that okay, king should not go to the forest and hunt, right? That was killing the animals. Even great personalities did that. Janaka Maharaj did that. Or you know many great because of the reason for that because of they have to go and hunt or kill the ferocious animals so that they won't create any kinds of troubles in the nearby villages. So they have to go and do that. So like that, Kshatriya, they have to always be ready with any kind of any time attacks comes or somebody attacks from our neighboring country. They should be always ready with their plan. So basically, this was the, the, the basics of you know, this all these kinds of games came into the place. That's a part of Kshatriya, that code of Kshatriya, so that they're always making plans, you know, how to defeat others. So it's a code of Kshatriya. So Dharma means basically it's 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 not like that, you know, a king's dharma is we cannot compare a king's or Kshatriya's dharma with our own or regular or grihastha's dharma. It's different. A husband's dharma is not the same as a wife's dharma, it's two different things. So nowadays the problem is that you know everybody, you know, taking the dharma their own. Like you know, as wife says that okay, why can't I same as my you know male or females? You know, this is all the conflicts and the problems in this world, right? They think that you know I should behave like a man, and then man think that you know I should behave like a woman. So you know the teacher did behave like you know the whoever is ruler behave like a shudra, but. He is supposed to behave like a Kshatriya to protect the people, but he is like a, becoming like a, um, you know, robber and a thief and a plunderers and so many things, right? So people are actually going away from Dharma, real Dharma, their own duty, their own Dharma to perform. So that is a basic conflict in this world right now we are going through because of now, you know, it's pretty much three legs of the Dharma is gone, right? So that's why, so we should understand what is our dharma. A devotee's dharma is different. A, a pure devotee's dharma is different. A husband's dharma is different. A father's dharma is different. A children's dharma is different. Everybody, that's why it is in a so wonderful our, uh, our scripture, which gives us, and these are the examples of it. And Yudhishthira Maharaj was the ideal king that had to rule the kingdom. And even though Yudhishthira Maharaj had this entire Bharata Varsha, Dhrishta Maharaj was not even attached to any of the, even a little symbol thing over there. Dhrishta Maharaj, you know, fought for to establish the Dharma, religious principles and Dharma and for the people. And then only 36 years, even though Dhrishta Maharaj could live longer or rule the kingdom forever. But 36 years, just rule and as soon as heard that Krishna has also left this planet, they all left and they were walking. Remember that they are walking to the Himalayas. They were the kings and rulers of this world. They were walking and walking without food and water. They were going to the Himalayas. Think about it. So this is the ideal. This is a, this is a wonderful, wonderful thing. So we should always think about this one. As a devotee, what we are supposed to do as a husband, what is to do, what a wife is supposed to do, these are dharma duty. So when we do this properly, there is no problem. I mean, nowadays, you know, family has problems, children has problems, parents has problems. Everywhere there is a problem. Everywhere. Even as two person comes together, there is a problem. Why? Because if nobody follows this dharma, it's very important. Yes, you brought up a wonderful point, Roji. Yeah, so it's our duty. Yeah, it's our it's our duty to understand what is our dharma and follow that dharma. Then we'll be peaceful. We'll be always protected, and we'll be, there will be no problems in this world. So that's why you know we have to learn and understand this from the Bhagavad Gita and from the great personalities and the devotees, so that we can apply it in our life. Thank you, Prabhu. Wonderful answer. And that was explanation, Prabhu. Thank you. Don't work from everyone. To you, Prabhu. Yeah. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji, Dandavat Pranam. Hare Krishna, Dandavat Pranam. All good, Shashila Prabhu. Yeah, wonderful. 
Uh, so, Prabhuji, like to this discussion that was going on, can I add a point? Oh, yes, please. Of course. <laughs> So, Prabhuji, uh, what I feel is uh, the intention with which we do any actions, that plays more important than the action itself. Like if the intent, even though the action could appear as wrong, like it could be gambling or telling lies or something, but if the intention was good to do some good to someone, then even though it appears that it is a wrong action, but I think that will not be counted as uh, like really wrong. So here, even if Yudhishthira Maharaj was doing the gambling, but the intention there was because he was a Kshatriya and he was doing his duty. Similarly, like I mean, we also have a story, like right, right, a butcher was running behind a cow to actually kill the cow. And then there was a saintly person sitting. And he said, uh, like, then he, the butcher asked that saintly person, where did the cow go? Then he said that uh, he, he guided him wrong, like saying that, you know, the cow went in the opposite direction. So although the action was telling lies, but then the intention was good because he wanted to save the cow. So I think that's what we have to look at. Not, I mean, I, I don't know. I just, that thought came in my mind. So I just said that. Religion. There are certain but situations and exceptions are there. Like, you know, in this case of, that is called, and the, um, there is a word that is called, uh, Nirubhadravakar means Nirubhadra means which is not harmful for anyone, right? Like, you know, just for to save a calf or save a person or save from somebody from the danger, uh, rescue from somebody and to protect somebody. And this is this is all part of Dharma, that Dharma of that comes under Dharma anyway. So that is not that, but for anything that which we are trying to do like selfish and personal desires in order to fulfill our personal selfish motive and then we put it in such a way that you know like you know many people or so many cases there you know people you know the tax frauds you know just to get some few dollars or few hundred dollars a few thousand dollars what they do they put all this you know this one and that one i did that when i went there and you know, somehow or other, you know, they know that, you know, this is not right, but still they do it because of, yeah, they get some gain. These are all cheating and this is all, you know, kind of things. So, you know, we may say, we may sometimes, you know, what happens is very, there is a very narrow line in between them. Why we are doing for that? Is it not for me? It's not for my personal gain. We know that the story of, that's why Bhagavatam is full of wonderful stories. Maharaj Shibi. And then the Deva, right? Harishchandra. Remember why is that all that there? Harishchandra was the most and most uh, truthful person. Harishchandra, but he had to go through all this, all the troubles. How you know that the story of Harishchandra? You heard the story of Harishchandra? Anybody? Yes, we will hear it. Harishchandra. Yes, we will we'll tell us some another day. Beautiful story. Beautiful. Yes, sir. Why he has become hard to go through all? Because of he is extremely truthful. Always keep the dharma. But finally, the Lord is very much pleased with him. But he had to go through all those things. So, yes, it's sometimes, you know, it comes to testers and all those things. And But, uh, you know, we should uh, see that. Hmm? It's a very slippery slope. Yeah, well, slippery. exactly. Narrow oh. line. If somebody is good, you know, for kisi ka bhala hoi, to I can do something wrong, like tell a lie or even gambling. Here's a thought experience. Experiment. Yeah. There is this New Jersey lottery. I don't know how much it is. Some 100 million, 300 million, those numbers are crazy. Mm -hmm. Now, if you win the New Jersey lottery tomorrow, what will you do? Will you say, oh, Bhakti Vinod Thakur said 50% to give to uh, bhakti projects. 25% you keep for yourself, for your upkeep, and 25% for your retirement. Now we're talking about $300 million. So you factor inflation, you factor that you live for the next 30, 40 years. It'll still be more than what you need. So would you, A, give the entire $300 million to your Guru Maharaj or for his con project? Or would you keep 50 percent? 150 million you'll give. What? How will you decide this? Because we can say, okay, you know, if I win, I can go and play lottery. 
And if I win, I'll give 50% because that's what Bhakti Vinod Thakur Acharya has said. And remaining I'll keep for myself. So it may seem to be an act of devotional service, but it's going to be really detrimental. Yep. If, if we think of playing lottery, which is gambling, actually lottery is gambling. Even the stock market is gambling. Unless you're making it for an investment, then you invest and you forget about it. You're not worried whether it's going up or down. So if you're gambling and you say, oh, I'm doing it as a service, if I win, I'm going to give it to my temple. So it may seem superficially a good intent, but we know in our hearts, in the heart of our heart, we know that whether, and even if we think that, oh, I'm going to give the entire 300 million to ISKCON, my Guru Maharaj, I'll give it to for Bhakti, whatever, whatever Bhakti project. 300 million I win, I'll give everything. Even then, it's a risky slope to go on. And that's why we need the yep. Acharya or Guru. They'll be able to explain to us what it is. And if they say, then do it. In absence of that, we may think it is good. We may even make parallels to the uh, Shastras and pastimes and instructions and this that so again comes back text context that's where it is otherwise and how do i explain it's like hitting yourself with your sword chopping your own foot so it's it's very slippery for this thing the best thing is be in the shelter of the forties mahaprabhu had said once when you know we were thinking of this temple project early days, one devotee came and he kept saying, Prabhupada said this to make whatever point he would put forward to support it. He kept giving Prabhupada references. Prabhupada said this, Prabhupada said that, Prabhupada. He kept Prabhupada, Prabhupada, Prabhupada. And you know, if you're sitting in a discussion, Vaishnav, and an Acharya is quoted, it is, you know, everyone has to keep quiet then. So it seems. So Mahaprabhu Prabhu, a senior devotee from uh, Mumbai temple, he said, hold on. Prabhupada has said many things at many times to suit your convenience. You're picking this particular quotation and you're putting that particular quotation. Just live one instruction which Prabhupada has given. That's more than enough. So that way it is, you know, we need to be uh, examine our own intent at all times. and then. Cross-check it with a Vaishnava. Prabhuji, what do you think? If Mataji is then Mataji, what do you think of this? Whatever. Grateful. Yeah. Wonderful. Is it clear, Mataji? That's uh or is it still uh yeah, Prabhuji? So uh, basically what I understood is the intention is something that really plays the role, but the Maya is so powerful that it might trick us. Yeah. It would be hard to decide sometimes it is, is it our interest at the end of the day or, or is it like really are we trying to serve Krishna or is exactly. it our, 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 or are we serving our own interest? Exactly. I think, uh, yeah, yeah, Prabhuji so rightly said that yeah, we should always be very careful about it and also consult the yep. question of us if we are confused about our duties. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yes, sir. Thank I thought you were an example which happened with me and how I took the shelter of a Vaishnav. Um, whenever I read something, uh, I think, actually I overthink, that's my problem. Uh, you know, how is it like this, like that? And I had this thought that Krishna is the father of everyone, we are the children. And I was equating that relation with the relation a parent has with a child. And naturally, in a normal parent-child relation, the parent always does the most for the child. Parent will go hungry, but he'll feed the child. You know, that, that is how a parent is. Now, if we are chil Krishna's children, the thought in my mind is that Krishna would want the best for us. And what can be better, the best, whatever is the best, the best, the best, is God. God is the best. So why can't Krishna make everyone God? After all, he's a father. 
and father will always want his son to be even better than him so if the son becomes more successful than the father that is so much pleasing to the father so this was my line of thinking and i had this i wrote a small little couplet and i said what kind of god is god if he can but he will not and if he does if he will but cannot make everyone else god so i was thinking on this thinking thinking finally i asked jayadatta maharaj and i told him this maharaj what kind of god is god if he can but he will not and if he will he cannot make everyone else god maharaj said four words and that clarified everything it clarified everything months and months of overthinking he saying that's all demoniac thinking four words that's all demoniac thinking straight away he dismissed it and just with these four words when i thought about it i realized because all of us want to be ishwara all of us want to be ishwara and to be ishwara our mind will think of anything our mind will uh, take us in any direction whatever it is our mind will take support of shastra our mind will take support of bhakti mind will do anything that is the nature of the material mind so when maharaj said these four words and i thought a little bit about it so that's why when you know as i'm giving this overthinking yeah and our intent maharaj four words he just straight away cut through the noise that's all demoniac thinking that's it yep mental speculation mental speculation yep yeah so i think uh, the bottom point is actually we should always follow sadhu shastra and guru and this all will come in line with anything that which that's where we always depends upon and of course when we depend upon sadhu shastra and guru definitely it is in line with krishna right so that's the ultimate appropriate and that should be always should take it in our life sadhu shastra and guru and krishna of course that's the krishna's instructions sadhu says shastra says guru says that's instructions to us from krishna okay so let's conclude yeah so okay thank you prabhu mata ji mother ji is okay uh, yes yes prabhu ji absolutely sorry i am also doing some other work in the house panel um, no no problem yes yeah, for yeah, so the answer prabhu ji uh, that clears my doubt thank you uh, thank you amritanand prabhu ji and thank you sameshwar prabhu ji thank you prabhu ji thank you thank so you hari krishna okay Let's conclude then today's session. Vanchya kalpada rubashya. Rupya. Jopatya naam pavane bhi. Krishna vebhyo namo namo. Krishna vrindaki. Jai. Jai. Nanda Gaudi Vaishna vrindaki. Jai. Guru Prema Nandi. Hari Hari. Hari Hari. Hari Hari. Thank you, Shankar. Thank you, Sumbhashan. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Hari Krishna. Hari Guru. Hari Krishna.